We now start our tour of Coley Streets Park 3 with a historical introduction from Mr Joe Doak who will illustrate the beginning of the area of Coley up to the present day. This section of the tour covers the historical development of the area around Willow Street. The tithe map of 1838 shows the shaded areas of existing housing development to the west of the Holy Brook up to Castle Street. Willow Street can be seen as a track running down to the River Kennet. The land parcels to the east side of the Holy Brook were still owned by the Monk family as part of the Coley Park estate. Plots 156 and 157 were recorded as meadow, whilst 155 is used for growing withies, which are pollarded willow trees for basket making. This hand-drawn map comes from Stephen Blake's 1976 PhD thesis on the physical expansion of the Borough of Reading, 1800 to 1862. It shows the first bits of housing development east of the Holy Brook. This was undertaken by Samuel Collier after he bought plots 155, 156 and 157 in 1852. Initially he built eight houses in Willow Street and laid out a road on the east side of the Holy Brook, which he named as Brook Street. He built 16 houses on Brook Street before 1862. By 1864, six more houses on, were built on Lower Brook Street. The Lower Brook Street houses can be seen in this detailed Ordnance Survey map from 1879. Apart from a few other buildings near the River Kennet, it also shows the road layout for the plot of land north of Willow Street was being prepared. By 1899, this plot had been developed, properly also by Colliers. It consisted of Henrietta Street, Bright Street and Parnell Street. On the south side of Willow Street, to the east of Colliers' eight houses, the Salvation Army built their first permanent base in Reading in December 1881. Margaret Ounsley's forthcoming book notes that they had a tough time establishing themselves in the local area and that they faced intimidation by what they called sinister forces. As mentioned in part two of our tour, between 1908 and 1909, the Coley Branch Line and the Central Goods Depot were built by the Great Western Railway. The Salvation Army Temple was compulsorily purchased and incorporated into the depot, whilst five terraced houses were demolished in Lower Brook Street to provide access for the railway line to Simmons Brewery and the timber yard at Bear Wall. This is what the area looked like in 1931. Living cheek by jowl with the Cody Branch Line, the Central Goods Yard and Simmons Brewery were the residents of Brook Street, Lower Brook Street, Temple Place, Willow Street, Bright Street, Henrietta Street and Parnell Street. Here are two aerial photos from the English Heritage website that show the area at that time. The 1962 Ordnance Survey map provides house numbers which may be of interest to people who lived in the area or remember it during the final days of Willow Street's existence. Then in the late 1960s the IDR crashed through this area, taking out Brook Street and Temple Place initially, then demolishing and redeveloping Willow Street, Bright Street Henrietta Street and Parnell Street and just leaving Lower Brook Street as a remnant of what had gone before. We start the third and final tour of Coley Streets at the junction of Wolseley Street and Willow Street as shown in this image. 
The memory I have is my father telling me of the German bomber machine gunning up Willow Street from the River Kennet and the bullets ricocheting off the road with him having to take cover behind Tunbridge Jones garage wall on the left. He was trying to get to his mother's house in Brook Street to make sure she was okay. When he arrived she was standing in the back garden waving a frying pan at the plane. He brought her into the house to take cover. Apparently one of the bullets went into the stables by Great Passage and killed a horse. The last building by the man on the left is Mr Shipton's garage, who owned the corner shop just past the tree on the left. If you look closely at the wall of the garage on the left, at the bottom you can see how badly the brickwork is crumbling. And I tend to think that this building is part of the old Union Workhouse, later adapted as shops in the early 1900s. On the right hand side you can see the Blue Lion Public House. The pub was a meeting place for social activities and crowds would gather at this road junction on November the 5th to view the bonfire celebrations on the spare ground, now the Coley School car park. On one occasion some bright spark dragged a flaming car tar off the bonfire to the Coley steps and let it roll down into the crowd. Fortunately everyone got out of the way and it hit the doors of the pub. If you look to the right just past the blue line you can see a hedge. Set back behind this hedge was a little cottage with church type windows. Moving on you can see the bridge over the Holy Brook and the Borough Arms pub run by Alice Wicks with the help of David Bryant from Walsley Street. On the left hand side you can see the famous conker tree which had a large rope tied to it and we used to swing out over the river. There was the knack into the way you would swing out so as to get back to the bank. Many of the girls and boys using it fell in the river and went home soaking wet. The tree was situated on the corner with Henrietta Street and on the opposite corner was Mr Shipton's shop, which you can see in this image. This photo shows Willow Street as it is now. The Simmons Maltings are just out of sight of the picture on the left. We now move to the bottom of Willow Street and I will pass you over to the late Doug Noyes for his explanation of this end of the street. To March 1969, with the entrance in front to the old central goods station. As seen in July 1967. The north side of Willow Street. This looks as it had done for years. But what are the people who lived here? There was Sawyer at number 13. Miss Mary Richardson at the shop, number 17. Stacy at 21. And Gibbons at 23. Then, much earlier, Mrs Nugent rang the calf at number 35. I'd like to go back to the central goods depot with another image taken at a different angle and add some more information to Doug's film clip. The history of the depot is that it was once a Masonic lodge and if you look at its construction it looks a grand building with a large door in the centre leading onto the street. It then became a goods depot when it was converted for railway use one of the occupants being Fife's Bananas, and finally a store for Manor Bakeries, also known as Mr Kipling. The memory I have of this building when it was derelict is going inside with my friend Keith Evans and climbing the three flights of stairs to gain access to the roof. We wanted to catch a couple of pigeons in the dark that had got in and then take them down to his grand shed for a couple of days to turn them into homing pigeons. Little did we know that they would fly back to the depot when released. 
If you look just between the depot and the terraced house, you can see an alleyway to the back gardens of Brook Street. This is an image of my uncle Edward Turner standing in the garden of number 11 Brook Street and you can see the alleyway behind him and the side of the Coley Goods Depot with a railway wagon on the right of the picture entering the loading bay. The terrace houses on the south side of Willow Street takes us back to the Borough Arms and the Holy Brook. The families I remember in Willow Street that have not been mentioned are Jim Jewell and his wife Violet with sons Mark and Johnny and the Mackey family. I remember Terry Mackey well, I think he ran the Coley Boys Club. We now go back to Doug Noyes for photos and information on the demolition of Willow Street for the IDR. The winter of 69-70 saw the bridging of the Holy Brook. This is near where the Bar Arms stood. At the same time, the supports for the footbridge were in place. Transformation of Coley was well on the way. By August 72, the bridge was finished. Yet in the distance, part of old Coley still stands. Let's go to the end of the bridge for a closer look. Here is part of Henrietta Street. The nameplate is on the side of the end house in Willow Street. Behind this is the demolition of Bright Street. And in the distance, the bridge of the IDR crosses a Kennet. Watch this as we update this area. June 73. The old houses of Coley have been replaced by prefabs until it's redeveloped to become the Holy Brook site. The road surface of Willow Street still remains. Above it, the IDR crosses the river to the Southampton Street flyover. In doing so, it is now swallowed up part of Cates Grove Lane. This is a photo of Henrietta Street. The conquer tree would have been on the left by the river and Mr Shipton's shop on the right of the image. Such a drastic change to the previous picture. This photo shows a street party in Bright Street and outlines the north side of the row of terraced houses. I was born three years after this photo was taken and spent my childhood at number seven, halfway along on the left hand side of the picture and I can still remember the stories of the VE Day celebrations. The Simmons Maltins building at the back still remains there today and was used in the beer making process. Heat supplied from a furnace at the bottom of the building filtered through a hollow floor to the grain in the top. The bunting was handmade from old clothes and worn out bed sheets and stitching it all together was carried out using an old treadle Singer sewing machine bought into the street from the surrounding houses. It should be remembered that clothing and food would still be on ration, so the food on the table would have been a collective effort for the children's party. The tables and chairs were bought outside into the street from the surrounding houses. The children's party would go on most of the day with various games such as apple bobbing. Then in the evening the adults would get together for music and dancing with a bonfire lit at the junction of Parnell Street. The burnt outline in the tarmac remained until the construction of the IDR. We now look at this view of Bright Street during the 1953 Queen Elizabeth coronation. And I think there was a competition for the best dressed street which gave a different atmosphere from the VE Day celebrations. This image shows the family members of the street walking towards the camera. The two children playing the trumpet are Geoffrey Weller and the famous Derek Watkins. And in the centre of them is Terry Bradfield on the euphonium. I am the third child in from the left by the side of the trumpet player. 
The second man in from the right is my father. This image was taken about 1967 and shows the north side of Bright Street and my friend Keith Evans' house is the second one in from the far end. The Ford Anglia in the photo is mine outside my house at number 7 Bright Street. This photo shows the south corner of Bright Street and the house second from the end belonged to the Weller family. It also shows Simmons horse drawn wagon behind the railings of the Maltings. Here we have another picture of the street taken standing in the corner looking westwards towards the Holybrook River and the Salvation Army Hostel. This image shows another full picture of Parnell Street looking north. The house with the black wall belonged to the Snook family. Next to them lived the Biddle family. There are quite a few cars in this picture now, which is a change from, from what we had before. We also have St Mary's Church in the top of the photo. Then coming forward we have the Simmons Brewery Yard with the pallet stacked high. We would climb over the, that wall and cross the yard to the weir to go fishing. The weir was at the bottom of the Elms houses running down from Castle Street. The two streets had three gas lamps in them altogether and I remember the lamp lighter coming round in the morning and evening to turn them on and off. We now move west along Willow Street to Brook Street and we see this picture of the Borough Arms standing on the corner. The pub was run by Alice Wicks who also owned the calf by St Saviour's Hall in Barclay Avenue where we bought our slices of bread and jam coming home from the Coley Baths. I remember that they had a spaniel dog that I used to take for walks up to the Coley Recreation Ground and when we went to the bottle and jug for our crisps and pop we were served by a David Bryant who lived at the end of Walsley Street. Looking behind the pub you can see the chimneys of the Maltings one of them still standing today and to the left you can see the famous conker tree again. To the right you can just see Mrs Shipton's shop standing on the corner of Henrietta Street and in the middle the backs of the houses on the south side of Bright Street. This image was taken during the Queen's coronation at the southern end of Brook Street looking north and I think the lady with her back to us was Mrs Roberts. My grandparents, aunts and uncles occupied four of the houses in this street at number 5, 11, 13 and 17. This picture shows three of my cousins, Pauline Harris, Marilyn Warwick and Gillian Turner. Like the old saying goes, the apple never falls far from the tree. I would now like to pass you over to a good friend of mine, Sandy Mitchell, whose maiden name was Wheeler, for an de in-depth account of the people that lived in the street at that time. Most of these photos are taken in Brook Street. The first one here is a photograph of th myself and three friends, Peter Roberts in the back, Marilyn Barefield, Marilyn Warwick in the front and myself, Sandra Wheeler. The next photo is taken of my parents at the coronation. We had a fancy dress party in the street, fabulous time. My mum was a pirate, my dad was little Mo the tennis girl, who was famous at the time, and I was dressed in red, white and blue. Mum made all the outfits for us. The next photo shows Coley School. I think this was probably in about 1953. We were on a day trip with the school on a boat. I can't remember where, but um, it was somewhere, I think it's somewhere down the coast. Um, the names of the people in the photograph, starting with number one, was Veronica Pike, Edna Fowler, Anne Kersley, Lorraine Lambden, Diane Griffin, 
Gloria Prout, Sandra Wheeler, that's me, Daryl Evans, Brenda Holder, Peter Roberts, Barry Harris. And then we go on to the next photograph. Now this was taken, it must have been in 1941, 42, because my grandmother is in the photo and I was born in 44. She died before I was born. Um, the first person there I remember is Madge Roberts, then Mrs. Kersley, Joan Beasley, Rachel Barnett, who is my grandmother, Nora Humphreys, she was my godmother, and Wynne Wheeler, who was my mother. This was taken in Brook Street, outside number 11 Brook Street. Thank you. This image was sent to me by June Roberts and shows an image outside Reading Station for a day trip to Weymouth to treat the families of Brook Street in June 1964. It shows June with her children, Susan, Diane and Kevin. The other ladies are Peter Roberts' wife Kay and the Beach family mother whose name was Dory. Crates of beer for the trip can be seen on the left and my family were fortunate enough to go on the trip. We now have this image. The two girls have been identified in previous pictures, but it is the background I want to talk about. If we look to the left, you can see the front of Shipton's garage, which originally was the old Union Workhouse. If we look behind the right shoulder of Sandy Mitchell at the bridge in Willow Street, there was a large doorway to the bank of the river that was always kept locked. It seems strange as the river was fenced off by railings, the same as the ones in Brook Street. If we now look at the wall on the far side of the bridge, we used to gain access to the other side of the river and the grounds to the Holybrook House, where the poplar trees stood. On the river side of the bridge there was a ledge that we would stand on to walk across. However, if you tripped and fell, there was a 30-foot drop into shallow waters below. Once we had climbed down onto the other bank, there were bushes that looked like bamboo. If you cut them into sections, you can make pea shooters of, out of them, as they were hollow in the centre. Speaking to my friend Keith Evans, we have found out that these were Japanese knotweed bushes, the invasive weeds of today. If we stood on this side of the river, we can clearly see the back of the Coley Boys Club and the Coley Working Man's Cafe, as well as being able to catch large fish under the overhanging trees. In this next image, you can see the remains of the wall at the southern end of what was Brook Street, which was constructed along with the railway and coal yards to make the two se streets separate and to seal an entrance to the yard. If you look beyond the, that you can see Barclay Avenue Bridge and the backs of the houses in Elgar Road. Sadly with the building of the IDR the railway has, is now finished and the route to the future A33 is being built. We now look at this photo of the remains of Lower Brook Street at today's date. In Victorian times these were considered upmarket houses. If you look at the patterned brickwork and all eight, all eight chimney stacks you can see the workmanship put into the build. On the other side of the street and at the end there was a wall similar to the one in the previous image. Access to the houses would have been along Willow or Fobney Street as they were cut off now from everywhere else. We now look at this image at today's date at what would have been Temple Place, standing along the side of the Kennet, but now the alternative walk into the town. We now look at this image of the river 
it shows Temple Place being behind the telegraph pole on the left and the turn into Lower Brook Street is just behind the lady on the bank. The Eastern Printing Press is on the right hand side and the black building behind the man's head stood on the boat is Bain's Timby Merchants opposite the Maltings. The cottage in front of them on the left is, Lo is Jock Hunter's cottage who was the foreman of the building. I do not know what this occasion was. This is a close-up photo of Jock Hunter's cottage that was seen in the previous image. It stands on the corner of Willow and Fobney Street that can be seen in, also in the next aerial picture. This photo is an aerial view of the layout of Old Coley by the west side of the River Kennet from the 1950s. In the bottom centre of the image is the Coley Goods Depot. It shows the railway line layout into the Maltings and Baines Timber Yard. The houses in Willow Street, Bright Street and Parnell Street can be seen now as well as the cottage by the Maltings and the coal yard manager's house, Mr Perton, on the right hand side. Quite an in-depth photo. We now move left to the Holy Brook. We to see this in a very sorry state and as I stand watching it I look back into my childhood and remember this area as a major source of entertainment. People would meet on the summer's evening and stand talking by the river. Men and boys would be fishing with bread or maggots bought from wires the fishing tackle shop in Southampton Street. Little children would catch tickle bats and minnows with jam jars tied with string or fishing nets. It was completely safe as there were hardly any cars at that time and the railings prevented them from falling in the river. We also looked after the stream, cutting back the reeds and clearing any major rubbish and we would catch, that we would catch our fishing hooks on. The usual pastime was to build rafts from old doors taken from derelict buildings and strap empty oil drums to them from Hewins garages. Or we would build canvas kayaks with plans bought from Sleep's model shop in Kings Road. To paddle up the river you had to be careful though because as it was made of canvas it could easily be punctured. The other craft that was on the river was bomb boats. One I think was owned by Eric Roberts and they looked like fuel tanks from aircraft. The bottom was filled with house bricks to give them stability. I mentioned them to my Aunt Margaret, who was known to the residents in, of Brook Street as Peggy Harris. She told me that I was correct. They were fuel tanks from damaged aircraft, doing bombing raids over Germany in the Second World War. They would be jettisoned over Bucknell's fields before flying into Woodley Airdrome, hopefully for a safe landing. We now move to the other side of the Holy Brook to a road known as Brook Street West, which you can see in the top of the picture. But if we look into the river close to the road, you can see this running right down the length. In my youth this looked like a historical wooden walkway, which I think was something to do with the wool trade when the barges were pulled up to the town or to supply the Abbey Mill. This is a sorry state of the river now, neglected, butchered and left to overgrow. Even in this state I wanted to see if any fish were still living in the stream and some years back I took my grandson down there for his first fishing trip as I had done as a lad. He managed to prove fish still existed in the river he is looking worried at taking this spiny perch off the hook after I told him it could sting him as a joke. I had every intention of dealing with it myself. If 
Finally, we have arrived at Brook Street West with this photo. It shows the full length of the street, and if you look towards the far end, you can see the back entrance to Penta Body Centre Crash Repair Specialists. The names I remember in this road are Mick Fisher, Terry Barnes, who along with Mr Biddle in Parnell Street, were dedicated river fishermen. Then there was Mrs Robbins, who together with her daughter Wendy ran the Coley Girls Club. The gap between the houses are the back entrances to the homes in Wolseley Street. One of them was Mr Bristow's shop. The people would use the rear entrance as a shortcut to gain access to the store to save them walking the long way round Wolseley Street. Some of the homes on the immediate right of the picture were occupied by Mr. Pr Mr. Price and his family, along with Mrs. Waite and David Hodder. The r side of the river was always good for fishing as well. This picture shows Mr. and Mrs. Bristow with their daughter Jenny, but I do not recognise the other lady. Behind them is my grandfather and grandmother's house in Brook Street, with the Burr Arms again in the picture. We now come to the end and final video of the tour of Coley Streets. I hope it gave an insight into the people and places of Coley's past. We have created all three videos as a memory for people of the Coley area and the future inhabitants. Thank you for watching.